When we talk about transport, it's a great time to talk about policies related to fairness within the internet itself. Remember that TCP and other transport protocols that run at the edge of the internet have this built-in idea of fairness, which allows multiple clients to share bandwidth that's available on the internet. However, recently we've run into problems with another thing that can happen, which is what if your ISP or your internet service provider is manipulating the traffic that is uh, crossing its network to try to achieve some sort of goal. Normally, here's why this is done. So let's imagine that Alice wants to watch a movie on her computer. Pretty normal thing to do. Uh, and she found that movie both on iTunes and YouTube, and the movie's the same price. So there's no price differentiation here. And she, so she's trying to make a decision about whether or not she's going to stream the movie from iTunes or YouTube. Now, what would, should normally happen is if she starts to download the movie, her ISP should allow the bandwidth to iTunes and YouTube to be whatever it's going to be. And maybe one of the sites is faster in general, but maybe not. Unfortunately, what net neutrality reflects is that the ISP has a fair amount of ability because the packets are being transmitted over its network to manipulate her connections if it wants to. So let's imagine just for a second that this ISP has some cozy relationship with iTunes. Let's say that they're owned by the same big multimedia conglomerate. I don't know who that would be. Um, or let's say that iTunes maybe paid the ISP some money or whatever. Um, and so the ISP is now saying, okay, I want iTunes to win. If Alice is making a choice based on network performance, I want to give iTunes a boost. How do I do that? Um, well, there's some things I can do to Alice's connection that will actually improve performance for iTunes. I might um, prefer to not drop those packets when my routers are overloaded and things like that. I can also do something else. I can try to uh, slow down her connections to com other competing sites. So maybe this is YouTube and I, I don't know what other, these are the only ones I use, so I don't know what other movie streaming sites there are out there. Um, but let's say that when Alice tries to connect and stream from YouTube, um, the ISP starts to drop some of these packets on purpose. What's going to happen? So her TCP connection is going to assume that these drops are caused by connection and congestion. It's going to slow down. And so the ISP, if it wants to, has the ability to manipulate traffic in order to choose winners and losers. So rather than allowing Alice to make a decision about YouTube or iTunes based on their interface or their selection of movies or their pricing or their rental policies or whatever, it's going to try to influence the outcome by manipulating the performance of those websites as experienced by Alice. Now, this is very, very difficult to detect. Happily, in February of 2015, uh, the FCC actually ruled that this type of manipulation is illegal in the United States. And so uh, carriers are not allowed to do this. If they are uh, found doing it, I guess they could be fined or whatever. Um, and this was a really, really important part of creating a free and open internet and allowing the internet to thrive. Because a lot of what's made the internet work is the fact that we let these battles be won based on other factors. We let them be won based on selection or price or other things rather than allowing the um, carriers, the ISPs, to pick winners and losers based on their own financial relationships. Unfortunately, this sort of practice has, has started up again in a different form. Um, and so this is a process that's known as, uh, that happens frequently on mobile data networks. It's something called zero rating. So what is zero rating? So uh, let's, let's imagine that we have the same pre-existing relationship, and I'm not trying to pick on iTunes here. Please don't sue me, Apple. Um, but let's say that the ISP has some sort of relationship with iTunes that is causing them to want to prefer iTunes over YouTube. And let's say that Alice is not on her desktop here or her laptop. Let's say she's using a smartphone and she's connected to a mobile data network. Normally, the traffic that she sends over that mobile data network in most parts of the world is metered. So you pay for a certain amount of data per month, and uh, if you use more than that, you pay more. So most data that's used on these mobile data networks is metered and you pay for a certain amount. However, the carrier can choose to do something called zero rating. So what the carrier can say is, Alice, you know, iTunes is such an awesome movie website. Uh, it's a great place to get movies. And by the way, if you download content from iTunes, we won't count it against your monthly data allowance. So the data charges are free. So you can download as much data as you want from iTunes. You still have to pay for the movies and stuff like that. But the data itself, as it travels across our network, we won't 
penalize you for. So this is, you know, in some ways, another attempt by ISPs and mobile data providers to manipulate uh, the marketplace to um, make people, to sort of shape people's preferences. Apparently, studies have shown that people do, as you would expect, prefer to access content on sites that are zero rated by their telecom providers. And so, you know, as we go forward in the future, I think there's going to be a lot, we have to fight these battles over and over again. There's going to be a lot of discussion about the role that ISP and mobile data providers play um, in providing content, what should rules be about how it's delivered, and what sort of fundamental fairness should we try to establish within the middle of the network so that we can encourage innovation um, at, at the edges.